here and now. This is Steve Strogel and Dr. Ibrahim Weisfeld of the Jewish Socialist Bund. And we continue now with our weekly analysis of the current revolutionary struggles and events of the war, the developing war that is uh, coming about. And uh, there's a, okay, so we have two wars, two sort of localized wars happening at this time. One, Gaza, which is expanding, the Intifada is expanding into the West Bank, <clears throat> and in uh, Russia, Ukraine. Now, if the uh, conflict over Gaza is becoming uh, more elaborate and um, the Zionists are not willing to negotiate a ceasefire because they figure that they can outlast uh, the Democratic Party administration that they're going to get, you know, more favorable administration when the Republican Trumps, you know, come in to power in the U.S. in November. <clears throat> Maybe that's their strategy, but that's not necessarily, you know, favorable to their intentions because, you know, any American administration, whether it's Democrat or Republican, is going to become awfully pragmatic, you know, when they're faced with the might of <clears throat> Iran, Hezbollah, and Ansar Allah in Yemen, and uh, Hamas, and the Intifada in the West Bank. You know, the, you know, the Zionist regime cannot withstand that. And uh, <clears throat> they're sort of counting upon American backup to come in there and support them against uh, the Hezbollah in Lebanon. Even if, you know, the United States has already declared to both uh, the Zionists and Iran that they're not going to get involved in any sort of... Uh, attack on Iran uh, when uh, Iran takes its retaliation for having its uh, capital violated by an attack and assassination of Haniya. So <clears throat> United States is afraid of uh, regional war as well as the Zionist regime. And uh, <clears throat> they are trying to separate each conflict, you know, one from the other. And they're not able to do that. This is uh, not possible. They have lost control of the situation. <laughs> That's a funny word, you know. The Zionists, they always talk about the situation in Gaza, the situation in the West Bank. No, they don't use the words West Bank. This, the situation in, uh, in uh, what do they call it? <laughs> Judeo-Samaria. Some of them call it that. And they're losing control. They're not able to sort of, you know, repress the Intifada in the West Bank even. And they certainly have not been able to destroy Hamas as was their declared intention. And they won't be able to as well, and certainly not with Hezbollah. So what is to be expected there is the ceasefire talks that Biden has declared is going to come to fruition in three days. You know, there's going to be peace under his administration is bullshit in no way, you know, because... <clears throat> The Zionist regime has no intention of uh, stopping the assault on Gaza. They have uh, only declared that they're willing to withdraw to unpopulated areas of Gaza. <laughs> it's not unpopulated, it is depopulated. 85% of Gaza is now uh, a no-go zone for the Palestinians. And uh, they're uh, concentrated in uh, tent camps on the, on the seashore where they were get bombed in any case but you know they're running out of targets you know they're the bombings have declined the number of massacres has declined and uh instead of you know 100 200 you know deaths per day they're now uh operating on a level of about uh, 30 to 50 uh, deaths in a day but that's not the real sort of you know measure of the genocide genocide that's happening in gaza because it is the health conditions of the of the Gazans that is more crucial, and they're going to start developing mass diseases, including polio, where it's going to be devastating, you know, deaths of thousands, not just hundreds. And this is being maintained, you know, the, the Zionist regime is still being armed by the United States. There's, uh, you know, in the course of this last week, you know, I remember, you know, one allocation of 3.5 billion for something or other. And then after that, it wasn't enough, you know, another allocation of 20 billion for armaments because the United States 
cannot allow the Zionist regime to be defeated. If that happens, then the whole Middle East is going to blow up, not in war, but in revolutions. Because if Hamas can defeat the Zionist regime in Gaza, then, you know, why can't the revolutionaries, you know, defeat the totalitarian regimes in Egypt, in Jordan, uh, and I would add Syria as well, in order to make them truly independent uh, independent nations against uh, the occupation. The whole area is occupied by the United States of America. You know, never mind, you know, just the Zionist occupation of Palestine. It's the whole Western Asia, which is occupied by the U.S. and its military bases there. I was surprised to hear from Ahmed last time that the, even in Jordan, there's like six U.S. military bases, all there ready, you know, to defend it against... Uh, against any, you know, revolutionary upsurge. And that's the purpose of their being there in the first place. So this is the waiting, waiting for war, period. And uh, this war seemingly seems inevitable. And it is being prepared for. That's what the waiting period is all about. In Iran, they're preparing for a retaliatory strike, you know, from the Zionist regime, even without the United States. They're still being prepared for that by Russia, which is providing the uh, technological equipment to, de to detect uh, incoming assaults like F-35 fighters, and <clears throat> hopefully providing them with the uh, surface-to-air missiles that are necessary to protect the airspace of, of Iran and the Persian Arab Gulf. So, this is going to be a historic confrontation that is being prepared right now. And uh, Iran is getting ready. Hezbollah is ready already. And uh, Hamas continues, and they are not uh, being defeated. In fact, you know, there's uh, quite a considerable number of volunteers to fight with Hamas. Uh, the Palestinians are not being intimidated. They're not turning against Hamas, as was calculated by the Zionist regime, in which they supposedly the Palestinians were going to revolt against Hamas and overthrow Hamas and make, you know, uh, some sort of a deal with uh, the Zionist regime to go to uh, the Egyptian Sinai or to leave for every other country in the world that is willing to accept Palestinian refugees, which is basically none, <laughs> because the whole world, you know, uh, all the regimes in the world are afraid of the Palestinians. <laughs> Even women and children are <laughs> are are not uh, to be accepted because of the strong Palestinian identity. What they are guilty of is uh, uh, Palestinian consciousness. They're not willing to give up on being Palestinian. Why? Because you know, they have the historic legacy that they are conscious of. They know how important their culture is. They know how important their civilization is. They know that their civilization brought civilization to Europe. And Europe is not going to tell them, you know, to leave their own country. <laughs> you know, this is not the way to go. So they will not accept such humiliation. They will not accept being submitted as, in submission to the Zionist regime. And, and they are the weakest of all the resistance forces. And yet they are still able to withstand the the most uh, armed, you know, military uh, that the United States can provide. And now, that's the situation. That's the situation. The situation in Gaza and the situation in the Western Orient. At the same time, there's all this stuff happening, you know, in Russia, Ukraine, and everything like that. Can you bring us up on that? You know, this is incredible. Oh, you're still mooted. Yeah. Here. I wanted to, I just want to thank you for your analysis of what's happening in in the Levant area, Israel, Palestine. I do think that the the peace talks are a tool of the US to continue control. The peace talks did not develop spontaneously or organically from people in Israel who want peace, extending the olive branch to Palestinians. 
those would be more viable peace talks. The Israeli regime is a violent, racist regime. It's a rogue state. And I can't see it accepting anything but continued power in the region over the Palestinians. We'll just have to see, is any agreement even possible? Mm-hmm. Because if I know you're a criminal and a terrorist and evil, and you see you're across from me, and I'm there to have peace and um, and and reparations, it's going to be hard for me to find a way to even talk to you because you aren't there with peace in mind. You're you're, you're there with continued power in mind. And in the same way, that also, I think, applies to the situation in um, the Ukraine and Russia. I was reading up on it a few days, last night. There was was supposed to be peace talks, which I was not aware of, between the the two sides, or the the West and Russia, because Ukraine is the West, in order to stop um, to come to an agreement on both sides regarding energy, infrastructure, um, a halt to military attacks on energy infrastructure. Now, to me, this is what I also want to comment about what's happening in, 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 in the Levant between Iran and Israel. I did not expect Iran to have any military attacks until after these peace talks are over. I don't, I don't think I don't think Iran wanted to overshadow the Palestinians. If they're sitting out with Israel, they have some talks, and Iran will not do anything until that's over with. That's my opinion. We'll see. And Israel might be constrained in its attack on Iran until this is over with too these peace talks. Maybe I'm wrong. We'll see. But uh, the United States lied to Russia and told them in a conversation in July, according to the, according to the New York Times, that they had, they had no knowledge of this incursion into the Kursk area by, hmm. um, by Ukraine. Now, we did not say they lied. I don't know that they lied. But since the United States as a nation is ruled by liars and thieves and swindlers and two fate and con artists and and, and and imperialist devils, I always assume they lie. Mm-hmm. You have to prove to me that, that that you tell the truth. When it comes to military affairs, you just can't prove anything. So they knew what was gonna happen and Allegedly, the goal was to seize a nuclear power plant and, and some nuclear material or some nuclear storage facilities in this region. Came, I've come to find out that Kursk and Belgorod areas where the, where the Ukrainians have, have, they have um, been attacking inside Russia are areas where there's a lot of wheat production and, and, agri- and agricultural um, uh, farm work, and when when you have these attacks occurring by Ukraine into in, into the region, it puts those uh, those, uh, those agricultural industries cannot operate. So therefore, the 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 military incursion has an economic impact, all albeit small, on the Russian economy. We 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 really talk about that. I ran across a gentleman last night, anti-Russian guy on, on YouTube, but I, I learned that from him. That when when these regions are under attack militarily, you can't they can't the the fields can't be harvested, the grain can't be brought to off the market, etc. So you have that situation. Um you know Ukraine is in a bad situation because they can't. Um, the the women of Ukraine have been very valiant 
and confrontational to their husbands and brothers and cousins being recruited and in and, and the army. I'm unable to show a video I downloaded from Telegram yesterday. It was a video of two women in, in a car, and they see these Ukrainian recruiters beating up a man on the side of the road. And they say, let's stop. The women said, they're not going to hurt us. We can intervene. But this is a very bold woman. They go right in, they get, they get right into the shit. They get right in it. What are you doing to this man? Stop. And the recruiters stop beating him and get back in the car. That's power. And across Ukraine, we have this, this challenge of women confronting the recruiters. So you have that problem that people don't want to join the armed forces. They just because they know the chance of being of dying and being uh, harmed for lo- the rest of your life is high. Ukraine is in a very bad situation. And I, I've said this from the beginning. I'm glad someone else is picking up on what I was saying. If all your soldiers, if, if you put every man and they start putting women on the on the front line, and you're losing the war anyway. You're going to decrease the, pos- the probability of, re- of replenishing your population. Their population went down. I think I think it went down three million, four million. It's, it's lost people leaving, people dying inside the war. So the women of Ukraine, not all of them, but many women are saying, "No, we, we're tired of this recruiting." So that's a good thing, and I think we should support these women across Ukraine who are going to the to these recruiting statements stations. And demanding that their brothers and husbands and cousins be let go, because because mm-hmm. once they put catch them on the street, they immediately send them send to to, to, a, to a, the front line to die. Mm-hmm. So that's one that these people don't are, are, maybe aren't aware of that there is resistance in Ukraine to 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 this recruitment. See, Ukraine recruits differently. And interesting, they 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 recruit older men first. People in their forties and fifties. Then they come down to younger men in thirties and forties. Then, then they go younger twenties and thirties. Then they get to eighteens. Mm-hmm. So they're a little different than than many Western countries, which recruit younger people first up 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 to older people, and they're losing a, a lot of the elderly, not elderly, but you know, older adult men are dying. And I do get a sense that there is a brewing resistance to this aspect of the war by Ukrainian people in general. They're tired of being recruited by Zelensky, who, who is ruling by martial law against against um, against his own people. So I think that's something that people need, need to know about. Um, secondly, it appears to me, even though we don't have any captured NATO soldiers yet, that this operation is clearly a NATO CIA defined operation in the Kursk region. Uh, it was very sophisticatedly pulled out using the, some some tricks, some tricks for the Nazi handbook, um, the, some some tricks from AI. Um, uh, this, there was a lot of a lot of sophisticated work was done, and again, I, um. People tend to forget when they say, well, France, well, France is having a meeting about Ukraine. People tend to forget that the West doesn't want Russia to win this war. Therefore, we should expect British, British intelligence, the Pentagon, French military, the German military to be working 24-7 to find ways to make that happen. Right? Yeah. Right. Right. Okay. And says that's four nations or five nations against one. Now, I'm going to say some people just don't want to say that's a hell of an odds to fight against. Yes, it is. Five against one is hard to, it's hard to win. So the fact that Russia is doing so well militarily is really a miracle. Because you have five nations against you, they're going to figure out some way to beat you. Yes, they are. This is, this is a war. This is a war. And nobody's guaranteed to win. No, they're not. I mean, nobody's guaranteed to win in, in war, okay? The Palestinians are against Israel, United States, everybody. Again, there's three, you know, at least at least Israel, United States, and let's say Britain, at least those three are, collab- are collaborating against the Palestinians. Yes, they are collaborating. 
we we don't have to have evidence. We know we know how 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 they operate. So what I'm saying is that the incursion and the curse is a diversionary move to to me to impact the try the try and seize the nuclear power plant, and also to, it will have an impact small but negligible on the Russian economy. A very smart move by imperialists hurt you financially. And it, but the problem is, is the soldiers are being killed. Here's a problem. Russia isn't stupid. They have lines of defense. They got their people over there to, 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 stop, to stop the forward motion. They're killing a lot of soldiers. So why do you want to kill get your soldiers killed? This is why I'm saying the Ukrainians have an issue with just letting their men be wiped out. That's not a good way to fight a war, man. Especially people don't want people don't want to join. It, it, it's different if you have people joining up. Hey, okay, I can maybe have some operation where I, I where I know I'm gonna lose people. I got recruits coming in, but you, Ukraine don't have that. So um, my thing is that the United States is so hell bent on, on on harming Russia that. Whatever they say they're not doing, don't believe it. Mm-hmm. Whatever they say they're we're not doing that, don't believe it. Because if you're helping on destroying someone's economy and hurting their their political system, and there will be no consequence if you lie. Mm-hmm. See, it's, For not, sure. it's, not like, it's not like the Palestinian movement here. The Palestinian movement here. And around the world is 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 is, is an international movement. Unfortunately, there's no international movement opposing the war in Ukraine, the war, the Russia Ukraine or NATO Ukraine war. There isn't. It's small and scattered. So there's less pressure on those countries, on Britain, France, Germany, um, the United States, to uh, restrain themselves or 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 to have a public face that is consistent with what they say. They do anything they want in that war. I, they, they, they do in Israel, but somebody's looking in, 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 in Israel-Palestine. In the Russian-Ukraine situation or NATO-Ukraine situation, everybody's not looking. So they, they really want to get away with anything. Anything they want to get away with, they, they, they're going to try to do it. So we'll have to see how this all turns out. Turns out, um, there's talking about Ukraine's going to launch an uh, a attack on nuclear power plants. Mm. I mean, this is yeah. absurd. This, this is absurd. Even to have that conversation mm. is an absurd conversation. So we we'll just have to see what happens. I, 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 I keep up with the war pretty closely. I've learned a lot about just things about countries and what people do. Um, I do hope that the Ukrainian women and families continue their their campaigns against recruitment, and I do demand the release of all the Russian soldiers and families that that have been detained by the Ukrainians in in uh, the Kursk region. Supposedly, there are some negotiations going on right now to to uh, to to you know, get them released. We'll see. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yes, I've heard reports about uh, the uh, resistance. Uh, Burning the vehicles, the cars of the uh, oh, yes, military yes. recruiters. As yes, well. yes, 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 yes. Th- th- thank you. That you know, you have to follow it on. You have to follow Telegram and, and left leaning media to know because the West does not talk about it. Yeah. New York Times, Washington Post, they do not cover that story. Maybe they do in England. I don't know, but that yeah. cover that story is not. It's, that, that story is not covered by the the, the cars. Of the, res- uh, of the military commissars being burned across across Ukraine. Hmm. That shows that shows you that some kind of movement going on with that. Yes, it is. Yes, yes. Um, you know, Kursk is a very uh, symbolic uh, um, name because during right. the Second World War, when the Nazi right. advance was uh, penetrating into <clears throat> into the Soviet Union, Kursk was the largest tank battle in in all of history. Thousands of tanks, you know, fighting against each other. And the Soviet Union won that battle. Together with this Battle of Stalingrad, those are the two determining battles uh, for the outcome of the Second World War. You know, that's what defeated the Nazis. The Nazi advance was stopped right there. Okay. 
So, so you that, know, it's very symbolic now. And, and I'm sure I'm sure that the Russian people are are are, are quite aware of that. And I've heard hmm. uh, the comments of soldiers that I've seen on Telegram indicate that they're very serious about about um, countering the curse, the curse, the curse operation. Yeah. Yeah. Russia will be able to defeat that intervention, no doubt. Um, how quickly and how they do it is another matter, because the, um, you know, they're within range of the nuclear power plant there, which is the largest in Europe, it has three reactors, I believe. And uh, I saw one in which the cooling tower, that uh, hyperbolic, you know, uh, structure, vertical structure, had uh, black smoke coming out of the middle of it. You know, there was a fire there at the nuclear power plant, a fire. <laughs> And what is the international agency doing about it? Oh, I saw a video uh, on Al Jazeera this morning, you know. Uh, three or four of these inspectors, you know, come around uh, to the um, pavement where a uh, a mortar had hit. And there was a little crater there. And so they were looking into it, you know, I suppose trying to see, you know, if they could find any fragments that would have any indication of where uh, the uh, where the mortar came from in the first place. But they are not... Uh, taking the initiative of denouncing yeah. the Ukraine for having uh, sent, you know, the mortars in the first place. They're just, you know, uh, saying, you know, it's a mortar, but they're not saying it's a Ukrainian mortar. They're, to, you know, deliberately withholding the information from the public that they're supposed to be, you know, assigned to discover in the first place. And they're not fulfilling their mandate there. So, the, you know, NATO and the West, are, they're giving the Ukraine all the support that they can. Who knows, you know, if they got boots on the boots on the ground in Russia itself, you know, with their military advisors from from NATO. But what is there is the NATO equipment, you know, that is being supplied in order to facilitate this incursion into Russia, into the Russian Federation from NATO. So this is a, a NATO war against uh, against right. Russia, right. not just the Ukrainian war against Russia right. now. Right. Right. Yeah, the the the. the uh... The um, the uh, Ukrainian dimension is is present, but it isn't the essential nature of the war. The essential nature of the war is NATO and the West against Russia. Because yeah. it wasn't because who is first of all who is sending them weapons? Ukraine does can't Ukraine doesn't have a Ukraine does not have a have a producing industry to mm -hmm. create those like, tanks and and air defense systems. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They might be able to do some drones. They might be, you know, they, I think they probably have have a drone production facility. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, they may have they may have a good way of of creating small arms. You know, but in general, if if if, if you compare both countries, there's no comparison. Yeah, between, between who can create what, and if if well for NATO in the West with the weapons and the intelligence and the satellite data. And you know, and also sending people. People need to remember too. This is something people don't even think about. When I send a, when I if if, if a country sends a uh, anti a um, some type of system, um, air, land, or sea system to another country, to, such as happening now in in in, in Iran, receiving Russia air, land, and sea defense systems, the operators of those systems are from the country. So when they send HIMARS mm -hmm. and other Lockheed, Lockheed Martin weapon systems or Patriot and other systems to Ukraine, United States military operates those systems, not Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. so, therefore, so therefore, U.S. boots, British boots are on the ground in Ukraine. Yes, they are because they operate the systems. They're not operated by by uh, Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. So therefore, like, like we're saying, this is a NATO war mm -hmm. against Russia, not a, not a Ukraine. Even though those are the parties that people align to, as far as so and so versus so and so, it's really mm -hmm. NATO in the West. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you're right. But uh, nonetheless, you know, I heard that uh, five of these Patriot missile systems were taken out by. Russia already, so the you know NATO doesn't have the uh, the means to uh, over 
uh, it doesn't have the means, you know, to, to achieve what they're wanting to achieve, which is regime regime change in Russia. They yeah. want a compliant uh, regime in Russia, similar to uh, what's that guy uh, Yeltsin, who was the drunkard, you know, who was put into place yeah. there, <laughs> and who was, you know, yeah. uh, you know, uh, catering, you know, to any sort of, you know, U.S. whim whatsoever, you know, like uh, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen yeah. again. I, I, I just want to say something about the. I mean, I, I, I'm I'm just going to say this and let it go. I, I think if if Mr. Yeltsin had a problem with alcoholism, that we should be hopeful he could that he could get treatment to get over the alcoholism. You know, it is mm -hmm. a disease. It, it is a disease, and the U.S. took took advantage of that disease. And mm -hmm. he was smart. He was smart enough though to uh, suggest that Putin be the next leader. So he has some uh -huh. intelligence. Mm -hmm. um, but there's the, the something that you said, though, I, I want to talk about the regime change, because something has come up in the news, which I had to change my, at least change my orientation towards, and that is what happened in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of a lot of support around the world for the student movement, right? You know, mm -hmm. students, students rising up and overthrowing the regime mm -hmm. and this and that, you know. But I don't think I did not do the analysis I needed to do to look at who actually might be pulling some strings here, i.e. the United States. Mm -hmm. It's now come out the United States has a long history of intervening in Bangladeshi affairs and in, that, that India was a supporter of, of, of the former prime minister. And they will have to see how the geo, geopolitical situation develops now in that region with Myanmar and India and 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 Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. um, when the Prime Minister left, she made a statement from India that the United States wanted to take over some islands in some part some part of the country and she would and they and the government wouldn't would wouldn't go for it. And then I I heard some story on on the on New Atlas that documented the connection between the the proposed prime minister of the banker with 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 the U.S. embassy for decades. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot that we just we have to just follow follow, follow the money. Mm -hmm. We gotta follow the money in these situations, mm -hmm. and not and I'm not saying the students um, played a bad role, but we have to follow the money and see who who actually is behind these situations. Yeah, and, and the students, they know that they're being manipulated like that. And so I've heard some student uh, leaders, you know, say that they will not allow a counter-revolution. That's what they're calling it. They're calling the installation of this regime in Bangladesh by the U.S. and CIA, basically operative, um, in, uh, despite his Nobel Prize, you know. Uh, and the students are saying they will not allow a counter-revolution. They're going to continue with their revolutionary process. So yeah. I hope... And it seems like, you know, they're still in the streets. So yeah. that will continue. So yeah. perhaps, uh, you know, that manipulation can be defeated or maybe force the new uh, prime minister to uh, actually carry out the uh, program of the uh, of the uh, of the social revolution that's happening there, initiated by right. the students. Right. And, you know, um, a lot of people just dis dismiss Bangladesh. Oh, it's not important. No, 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 no. Bangladesh is a very important country. Mm. Especially in the world economy, so yeah. much production of of um, clothing, textile goes on in Bangladesh. A lot yeah. of the clothes that we wear come from Bangladesh, and uh, therefore the working class and the students there are are are, are a powerful force for social revolution yeah. if given the right the, if they develop the right leadership. But yeah. the production of the production of the um, uh, in the textile, in the clothing manufacturing, has a lot of um, a key elements within within Bangladesh, and, it's, and it, it it is an important part of the of the world of the world economy. Yes, um, and Bangladesh is a transportation hub as well. For that's where you know a lot of the uh, seafaring boats uh, uh, come uh, and uh, drop off their uh, their 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 cargo uh and uh, it gets transported uh, everywhere else in south <clears throat> southeast asia 
uh, from that hub in Bangladesh. And uh, uh, the uh, previous prime minister um, was not so popular because in spite of the economic growth, but it was only an economic growth in Bangladesh, you know, for the national bourgeoisie, because uh, basically the population was being turned over, you know, to international corporations to, uh, for uh, slave uh, wages, you know, and they were producing clothing at an even cheaper, you know, rate than China was, than right. the Chinese workers, you know, are provided for. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, all of the uh, Asian countries, you know, end up, you know, being um, put into competition with one another, you know, to achieve, you know, lower and, you know, lower and lower wages, you know, like the country that provides the lowest wages, you know, will get the investment. And, and so they're all being so manipulated true. to that effect. Mm -hmm. So true. Yeah. That's, that's, so, that's, that's so true. That's so that's true. Why, yeah. Well, that's why the students, you know, were so upset, you know, because, uh, because of, of of this uh you know subordination you know to international commerce that they're being subjected to and uh and the United States was willing to go along with that uh you know uh, you know protest movement because the prime minister you know was uh, refusing to hand over those islands uh, as a military base for the US uh the US concerns there and and, and uh enable them to control the uh the uh, international uh uh, trade hub that uh, was situated there and the commerce, uh, which is as important um, as the uh, the Red Sea and the Persian Arab Gulf, you know, uh, transportation routes, you know, uh, as well as the Suez Canal. Those four are, you know, the world economy. That's, you know, like that's where it all happens. So, you know, the United States, in order to preserve itself and in order to preserve its domination, must have control over that uh, trade route there. Now, whether students are going to allow that, I doubt it. Okay, so right, 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 right. right. The so though the though they're going to have to break with that leadership that um, with the current leadership of the country and and continue a movement mm -hmm. that's in the, that's in the interest of the Bangladeshi and the international working class. Yeah, yeah, and that's very you know uh, that's ongoing. You know, that's quite possible. Now, yeah, it, it is quite po it is quite possible. It is. It is quite possible because the iron is hot. They we've, we've had a change, and no one is when you have this kind of change and it's happened suddenly. Mm -hmm. Then it wasn't a planned change. See, if it's mm -hmm. a planned change, it's different. But a sudden mm -hmm. change can be taken advantage of by by the right forces. Mm -hmm. Yes. So the student movement, you know, is continuing and has a prospect of actually. If it can get rid of one regime and can get rid of another regime as well, that's uh, not a problem. So uh, there's that prospect. In uh, Russia, Ukraine, Russia will uh, prevail over NATO. And they're prepared to do so and they are doing so. Okay. Yeah, Hamas and Hezbollah and, and Ansar uh, Allah, you know, and uh, Iran are prepared to take on the Zionist uh, regime. And uh, the United States can't do anything about it. So there can be, you know, a major advance there as well. A major victory for the Palestinians is the prospect. And uh, in spite of, you know, whatever, you know, um, armaments that can be thrown against them. So, you know, these are three conditions now in which NATO and the West, during capitalist imperialist forces, could be suffering a setback three times, multiplied by three times. So this is, you know, like a historic turning point. This is a point in history in which it is to be determined whether the West can dominate, sustain its domination over the world economy and the world politics for the next period, in the next 50 years, or not. If they lose on all three fronts here, then, you know, the prospect for their domination is limited, defined, you know, in, in the short term, not the long term. So, you know, this is the uh, prospect that we're looking forward to, you know, like we're living in a pot time and, <clears throat> and we're playing a role in the developments of an historic turning point. I think that what we have going here is um, international revolutionary process, international, not just, you know, local in one country after another, no 
this is a you know rural development, and we're looking forward you know to the prospect of an and an, a complete overhaul of world politics with the alignment of Russia, Iran, China, and India in BRICS against the economic front presented by the Occidental capitalist powers. Militarily, they're being confronted as well as we've noted. So, you know, like what's left? That's the economic and that's the military. You know, like they, uh, you know, uh, Western capitalist powers, you know, are not going to be able to hold on to the power that they have accumulated. This is uh, the end of, you know, uh, U.S. hegemony at the very least. In terms of the American economy, what should we be expecting? You know, that's, you know, if they cannot sort of, you know, manage to control and manipulate the international economy to their benefit, then their uh, flexibility, you know, in terms of the American economy is going to be limited. And limited to the extent of what? You know, is it going to provoke a social revolution when it cannot provide for the standard of living that they have previously been able to buy off the working class with? Okay, that's to be, you know, examined as well. Very true. That's, that's, that's very true. The economy in the United States currently, you know, high high inflation, despite what some people may, may say on the internet, there's no deflation, there's inflation. Mm. Food costs are still high. Gasoline mm. prices have come down a little bit, but credit card rates are still between 20 and 35 percent average daily balance, which is which is which are loan loan shark rates. Mm. Um housing. Rents are going up consistently in major cities. Rents mm -hmm. are going up, uh, and they're making very much, they're tying more rental more rental uh, contracts are being tied to uh, credit to credit ratings, not 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 your ability to pay the rent, but mm -hmm. credit scores. So you have a lot of things besides just bread and butter issues that are impacting the U.S. economy and, and the and the consumers. More and more uh, young people are living at home with their parents, which I think is a good thing, but that's me, um, because they, they, can't, they can't get out there anymore. It's, more, it's just it's more and more, more, more difficult to, to get their own place. The price of going to university is, it, it is, it is increasing, and seniors, many cannot go into retirement because the retirement does not cost, does not match the cost of living, so, so they have to continue to work. Mm -hmm. Wow. Does it sound good? Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Huh. Huh. Okay. Wow. All of these variables. Yes. Many. Many, many variables. Hmm. Many variables. And, and the, and the, and the, uh, the election in the United States. I don't. I don't know. We can talk about that some other time. But uh, it's since Biden dropped out, it, the whole prospect of Trump winning has changed. Yeah, it's changed yeah. entirely. So it's entirely he, up in the air. Yeah. Also, I've been reading that uh, both both uh, the Green Party's uh, Dr. Jill Stein and Dr. Cornell West are both, you know, getting accredited, you know, to be on the ballot, you know, in a majority of the states now as well. This is a change, big change. In American electoral politics, even at that level, oh, that's true. That's but true. Uh, I haven't seen Cornell West, you know, anywhere in the media, even the social media. You know, he's not yes. getting through. Jill yes. Stein is getting organized. And Cornell West, I hear, is getting on the ballot in the various states. You know, but I don't see any any sort of you know coverage of 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 Cornell well, West himself. And it's um, also. In, yeah, uh, not, not the West campaign, to be fair, is a failure. Mm -hmm. um, I, and I'm not trying to diss him because I don't like him. No, that's not it. I'm mm -hmm. just saying, if this is August. The election is in November. He cannot generate many votes. Um, he won't. He hasn't reached large numbers of people. Um, it's failed for a number of reasons, and it would be good if he got on the. It would be good if he got on the ballot. But if he even if Dr. West were to get a hundred thousand votes nationwide, 
that 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 that'll be a victory for him. He just hasn't he hasn't run a campaign to, to reach the hearts and minds of people. But it's but let's let let us give him credit. How do you do that without money hmm. in the United States? You can't do it. Or you know hmm. you can do it. You can go to union halls. You can go to local uh, sororities. You can go to churches. You you can go to parks and um, county county fairs hmm. and try to reach people. But well, that's not what the Democratic Party and the Republic, they have billions, billions of dollars of mm-hmm. donors to saturate the airways. And, and they also have news reporters that will write stories in, uh, in in the interest of the Republican or Democratic Party candidates. No mm-hmm. one wants a lot of, no one's going to write too many articles about Dr. West and and Dr. Abdullah, his his running mate, nor about Jill Stein, to be frank. The, 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 the two-party system in the United States is so locked in. There needs to be a, a meeting of the minds among all, 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 alternate parties how to make this work better. Because mm-hmm. right now, they can be on the ballots. They're not going to win. Mm-hmm. They're not going to win. If, if, if that can't be accepted, they're not going to win. And no one is sitting now in the double strategy of how can we, how can these third parties have a more viable chance of winning? Nobody's doing that. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not trying to be the, the, the killjoy or the, you know, the, the black elephant in the room, but I, I don't know what to say. I mean, I've seen no events in big cities like LA, Chicago, um, uh, San Francisco with Dr. Uh, West speaking. Mm-hmm. Why? Why you can you can win an event, can't you? Yes, yeah, easy. You rent a hall, you advertise it, you have security come and you have your event. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can. The mm-hmm. PSL does it. People that play the PSL does it. They have events online. I mean, I heard nothing from the man. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I think I think you know for all his intention to be a good candidate, I think he's failed so far. But failure is on a continuum to success. When we mm-hmm. fail, when we can become successful, we learn from failure. That's all. So I'm not saying he's no good at washed up. Failures are continuing to success. They're both yeah. ends of that line. So he can, that campaign can improve and can get be- it can get better. But yeah. so far, the message is not getting out. Well, it's not. Yeah. That's an excellent way of putting it. Yes. And, yeah. uh, but if, you know, the alternative candidates, you know, can get uh, from two to 5% of the vote, that would be like a breakthrough. You know, like people would finally sort of, you know, wake up and say, oh, wow. There was another way to vote. Wow, I didn't know that, you know, <laughs> type thing. But 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 Abraham, but the issue is what do they do with the two to five percent? Historically, mm. they do nothing. They do nothing with it. Yeah. After 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 the election, I've seen these elections and some we have people in California, you have some parties that get fifty that they make a they make a they may have a candidate get a hundred thousand votes for an office. What do they do after the election? Usually nothing. Mm-hmm. And that's the problem. After the election, what do you do with the people who voted for you? Mm-hmm. you they usually don't do anything, man. They oh, well, election's over. Let's go home. No, no, no. You take those people and build a movement from day one after the election. You do something with those, with those people who, who voted for you. You, you reel them in to, to activities at a local level, the state level, and national level to support your party. That's what you do. And people just don't do it. They don't, they don't do it. They just yeah. don't do it. I, I, I don't know why it's so difficult mm-hmm. to take the after election numbers and do something with it. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Just, that's all I see. Um, but uh, I'd like to ask you, you know, what is the uh, consensus uh, of opinion amongst the black nation to uh to the election now you know because before you know biden had this you know like strange kind of control over the black consciousness black vote you know because he's yeah. considered to be the best of a bad bunch type thing and he's well, supposed to be some kind of a hero in the south you know for supporting uh black civil rights uh right. even though he came yeah. from the south you know and this was his allure yeah. but now yeah. he's gone you know so like what's going to happen to the black vote well, in my in my view, the black vote is going to be, I would say, ninety five percent Harris. Uh-huh. There's no there's no way that if the conscious black vote, if you look at Trump, not the not the entrepreneurs, not the hip hop in 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 influence voters, 
Harris is a member of a black sorority, Alpha Kappa Alpha. Right there, you got the black middle class. You got it. That's 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 happening. Black women will vote for her, hands down. She got it. Okay, that's that, that's over with. And now, um, Harris has also enlivened younger voters of different of different uh, ethnicities. But I think the black vote will go Democratic. It will not go Republican. This is my view. I just based on you know being around and. Let's kind of see what, what people say. Mm-hmm. I, 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 was, I was in the library a few weeks ago. I heard a, a gentleman say, I vote for a dog before I vote for a, um, a Republican. And people mm-hmm. in the library say, yeah, you're right. People in the library say, yeah, you're right. Mm. Yeah, I remember that the Yippies, you know, once put up a dog as a candidate for the presidency, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> So I mean I I think Trump and Trump made that statement about black jobs and we're trying to say the black jobs of the immigrants. I said, what's a black job? He's just he's such a racist and a fool. He hurt himself. And I think the, the black gymnast was commenting about was commenting about Trump's black job during during the Olympics. Uh-huh. So he yeah, so I, I think he may have some African Americans vote for him, but I do think I think when the election is held. If I'm and I hope I'm correct, I, I hope not the guy I want this to be the to turnout. But I think mm-hmm. I would say that ninety to ninety five percent of Black Americans will vote for will vote for Harris, hands down. Mm-hmm. There's no way to vote for so it's not going to happen. No, okay. I mean when she when she entered the race, that helped the Democratic Party a lot. Mm-hmm. And really, I mean, I, I I think she might just win the election. We'll mm-hmm. see. Yeah, I, I, so, I, I think I was looking. He, 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 he just looks bad, man. He doesn't look good. He I mean, just he has nothing on people but hatred and nasty comments. And I'm not saying Harris has to have a good a good campaign, but if, if I'm a level headed, undecided voter, it's gonna be tough to vote for Trump. In my that's just me. Just mm-hmm. I mean, you know what he has had to offer me. Okay, so Cornell West is not known about in the black community yeah. at all, I suppose. Not, not really. No, not really. He's mm-hmm. known by by activist forces, by intellectuals. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it's not that he's not a good person. Not that he has done important to say. Maybe in like in like New York City, you know, in the east mm-hmm. east east coast, he's known more. Um, I I guess if if according to us. If he gets uh, if, if 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 he gets a hundred thousand votes nationwide, then he has he doing good. Mm-hmm. That's my opinion. Okay, okay, okay. Now, okay, so we, you know, understand what the situation is then. Okay, so I think that covers it for this week, and uh, oh. we'll be back next week. And uh, anything can happen this week, you know. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. Let's let's let's, 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 let's remind everybody to share, hmm. to like, to leave comments, and 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 to join us next week. Yes, right on. Okay. Uh, okay. Thank you very much for your insight, and uh, we continue on. And uh, the. Uh, the uh, the movements that we are helping to build are basically, you know, supported by the internet. If it wasn't for the internet, you know, we'd be nowhere. I remember, you know, how isolated we used to be. And then we finally got, you know, our own sort of means of communication. Before, we couldn't even communicate with each other. <laughs> Now, you know, it's, you know, you know, like, uh, we can uh, appreciate, you know, like what we have available here. And I think the authorities know that as as well. And so they were looking, they will look forward to find some way of restricting our access to communication such as this. But so far, you know, we have uh, been able to maintain our presence on YouTube, although YouTube, you know, can get, you know, like uh, fascist, you know, from time to time in terms of its censorship. But otherwise, you know, we have an available means of communication and we can carry out our analysis in public, which, you know, didn't exist before. 
you know, <laughs> the television mentality, you know, is still prevalent, you know, but we've been able to, uh, you know, break through that to some extent. And so that's why we're here. And that's why we should be shared, you know, because there is uh, no other alternative, but this alternative at this time. That's right. Exactly. Exactly. Well said. Okay. Here we go.